talked about one of the things that we're using less in the last 30 years is water use and that's something that people talk about a lot is how much water it takes to produce a pound of beef. Again, water is another one of those that's uh, even closer to home and you know greenhouse gas may be a bit abstract to people. Water, you know, use every day. you use it every day. You're turning the tap on every day for water and, and we've got to have water. As, as you all heard before, we've got to have water more than we need food <laughs> in, in a lot of cases. So water becomes very important. And there's a lot of discussions on where water is being utilized and is that, if you want to, is that the highest and best use of water in some cases. <clears throat> well, if we look at, at beef production, we use water in, in several different, many different ways. We've got to have water direct for direct consumption by the animals, just as humans have to have direct consumption but we also utilize water to produce feed and forage for those animals. We use water in our, uh, the processing and washing carcasses and equipment cleaning. There's water being used at the, uh, you get past the beef processing industry, there's water being used in the supermarkets and the retail outlets that's associated with handling those products through those <laughs> retail outlets or even through a restaurant. So there's water being used throughout the system. And if you look, again, if you look where the, uh, there's been some accounting work done of, of where water's being used in the beef industry, <clears throat> about 95% of the water footprint for the beef industry is associated on the front end with forage production, feed production. 5% of the water footprint of the beef industry is associated with actual water consumption by the animals, water used in the processing of the beef products, water used in the retailing uh, industries. So the largest part of the footprint is back on the feed and forage production side. And how can we address that is, <laughs> you know, if you go back to Dr. Caper's work where she looked over a 30 year period of time, we've actually reduced the amount of water. There's things we can do up in the processing side of the industry and so forth. But if you, again, if you consider that water footprint, that that's 5% of the water right. use and the, the other 95% is on the other end, <coughs> uh, then the main improvements that we can have in water use for food production period is back on the back end where we're actually raising the crops, raising the forage or whatever's necessary that's to drive through that production system. When you talk about that 95%, mm -hmm. so that, that includes the rain that just comes naturally on this grand prairie that's all the way through the United States. Right. Again, there, there's different accountings, if you want to, that have been done, and you'll see some wide ranges of numbers on where they come up with, a, where they try to develop a number of how many gallons of water to produce a pound of beef or, or a number. And, and as I said, there's a wide range of numbers. And in the accounting process that's used a lot of times, they are counting water that, as you indicated, it's going to fall on the ground anyway and be soaked into the ground. And so you can get into an argument or a debate if you want to, of, well, should that re be really counted? Because in one way, yes, that water was used to produce beef. But again, one way to look at it is, was that actually competing with humans? And so if, if rain falls on the prairie and soaks into the ground and produces grass that is then consumed by cattle, did those cattle really compete with humans? There's a providing a benefit to humans because the only way that would have uh, provided a, a benefit to humans other than producing forage for cattle to consume and convert to a protein product would be to have had that water run off of that prairie into a lake somewhere and be captured and that's uh, we can get into a whole different environmental discussion on that as to that's not sound environmental practice is just to let the water or manage areas and let the water run off. <laughs> so in those accounting one of the things that uh, a lot of times we need to use caution as we look at those numbers is how are they actually counting the water and, and I'll give you another example. <clears throat> uh, in the beef industry as well as our other livestock industries a lot of the feed products that we use are actually co-products from another industry. That's right. 
So for instance, let's use ethanol as an example. Uh, somewhere 30 to 35 percent of all the corn grown in the United States every year is used to produce ethanol to blend into fuel for vehicles. Well, it takes water to grow that corn to, to, to make the ethanol. But in some of the accounting systems, uh, and, and it, let me back up, so they produce the ethanol and then we use a co-product from that ethanol production industry that's called distiller's grains that we feed back to <coughs> primarily cattle. And then they take that co-product that otherwise would have to go into a landfill somewhere and convert it into beef product. Well, in some of the accounting systems, they will take, for instance, the distiller's grains and they will use all the water that was required to produce the corn that made those distiller's grains and, and count it against beef production, which in reality, the primary use of that crop was to grow the corn to produce ethanol to blend in the fuel for cars. That's different than if we simply said we've got a crop and we're going to put water on it strictly to feed the cattle. To me that's a direct use. And so in, in a lot of these accounting systems where they look at water used to produce beef, <coughs> some of the amounts of water that are being calculated into that system uh, in a way should not be in there because the, the primary use of that water was for a different purpose.